We are here to bring you everything and anything surrounding Porsche. I'm Mike. I'm Aaron. And this is P-Car Talk. All right. Welcome to another episode of P-Car Talk. I am Mike. And I'm Aaron. And going to report a little somber news if you're not paying attention and you don't really know who he is. Unfortunately, a good friend of ours, Rudy, Mr. 993, has passed mm-hmm. away. Um, our thoughts and prayers go out to his wife and his family and everybody that was close to him. He was a, a good friend of ours, and he was uh, very uh, influential in the Porsche community. Mm-hmm. He was a father, um, you know, a husband, a grandfather, yeah. a good friend. So he was an intricate part. And uh, we just want to dedicate this first half of the show to him and kind of tell people that maybe that are listening all across the world that maybe don't know who Rudy really was and uh, basically kind of give some info about his background and kind of celebrate his life a little bit. Um, I had one of his really close friends and close friends to us, uh, Lewis, from Houston, write some nice words and basically kind of give a little bit of background um, with his relationship with Rudy and some personal stories like that. So I'm going to go ahead and read that. And then Aaron and I are going to kind of tell you some personal stories that we had with Rudy. And then, um, you know, we'll take a quick break and then we'll get into the other side of our show, right? Let's do it. Okay. So our buddy... Lewis wrote this. Um, he's like, hey, Rudy lived in Katy. I lived in Houston. Honestly, don't know much about what he did for the local community there since we lived in two different cities. I know he did a lot for the, the Katy community as far as like on a personal, not even just the Porsche level, like as far as helping the community. Mm. Um, he helped people on a one-on-one basis too if people would come to him. So Rudy was a very, very good guy in the sense of like that, very helpful. Um, but, you know, he had some other really awesome things to say. It says he goes, he goes, but I do know what he meant to the Porsche community and me. He goes, I met Rudy for the first time in 2014 at a Starbucks located near his warehouse. At that time, I did not own a Porsche, but my friend Monty had a Porsche 1985 uh, dark blue Targa uh, with blue interior. Monty knew I was a car guy, so he invited me to this Porsche car- Cars and Coffee. I was hooked. Uh, I began to uh, I began to tag along all, to all of these morning gatherings in early 2014. I recall Monty telling me we were going to a a pop up Porsche gathering uh, northwest part of Houston. We arrived, uh, parked, and grabbed a cup of coffee. A few minutes later, I see someone pulling in. What I later found was at, in a, a, a Arena Red 993 4S, which I thought was gorgeous. Uh, the car was in the process of being rudified. And we'll, we'll get into what that yeah. really is here in a little bit, too. And it was sitting on 996 Turbo Twist at the time. It didn't have the gold ED8s on it yet or his trademark yellow belts or the yellow S on the back. However, I remember thinking to myself, man, that car is sex on wheels. I asked Monty who that guy was, and he says, oh, that's Rudy, Mr. 993. Monty and I walked out of the coffee shop, and Rudy was already holding court. As we walked toward the group, I heard Rudy telling a story about his recent purchase. Rudy was telling a funny and fantastic. Uh, Rudy was a funny and a fantastic storyteller. As everybody, we kind of know that as well with him. He's he's very good um, and very detail oriented when he's telling a story. Um, Rudy had a way of recalling every detail, sharing everything about his stories, kept everyone on the edge of their seat and holding their breath for either a climax or a punchline. After Rudy finished telling his story, Monty introduced me to him. As a Porsche newbie myself, I started to pepper Rudy with questions all about his car. At this point, Rudy had no idea who I was, but he was answering every question I asked him with a smile. Looking back now, I probably asked a bunch of dumb and fundamental questions, um, but Rudy was still wasn't frazzed, and he answered all the questions. And then he invited me to go check out his 993. He immediately said... You can sit it or drive it or whatever you want to do. I was like, man, this guy doesn't even know me. He's telling me I can take his car for a drive. I went home and told my wife that I met the coolest, most humble Mexican Porsche guy on the planet. Of course, my wife's response was, how cute. You made a Porsche friend. (laughs) (laughs) You guys know how it is. When you meet somebody and, like, you just vibe with them, you kind of, like, bro out, you know? And then uh, after that, I attended a local car and coffee with Monty and continued to run into Rudy. I told Rudy I'm hooked and I want to buy an air-cooled 911. He tells me he'd help me in with my search and ask me what model I'd want. 
My response was, I don't know. I know I want one. Before Rudy leaves, he gives me his cell number and tells me, come by my warehouse next weekend. I have a few cars that might help you decide what direction you might want to go. I asked Monty, uh, this guy has a warehouse full of these cars? Monty says, that is what I heard, but I've never seen or been there. Monty w- was also new to the Porsche scene in the world and was learning about Mr. 993 just like I was. Uh, the following week, I went to Rudy's warehouse, and of course, my mind is blown. And if you guys haven't seen this stuff, like it, it's it's out there for yeah. you to look at too, which is which is an understatement. But your mind is blown. But I've never met, I've never seen so many beautiful 911s in one place. Rudy always said my warehouse and cars are open to anyone who cares to come by and see them, and he meant it. He's always managed to make the people visiting his warehouse feel special. On four occasions, I called people from out of town visiting Houston asked me if Rudy would open up his warehouse for them to see the cars. Although Rudy was a very busy man, I knew I could always pick up the phone and ask Rudy if we could stop by. He rarely said no and always managed to make time for us and our out of town guests. I eventually fell in love with one of Rudy's G-Body 911s he had in his collection. It was a 1988 Carrera in diamond blue metallic. Every time I saw Rudy, I would ask him, uh, to sell me the car. His answer was the same. Car's not for sale. I knew he was setting me up. Eventually, in, in, two, in February of 2015, <laughs> we all know how that goes, right? In uh, February 2015, Rudy said, Lewis, do you still want to buy the diamond blue metallic G-Body? I said, yes. And we made a deal with two conditions. Rudy said, if you ever decide to sell the car, I want to be able to buy it back. And you have to promise me you're going to drive it like you stole it. Um, that was, if you're not familiar with that, that was Rudy's one of famous lines. He's always saying like how he always drove his cars like he stole them. So he was passing that on to Lewis, especially as a newbie. And then he goes, uh, after I purchased the car from Rudy, we created a bond that extended beyond the cars. Our friendship grew and he became my friend and mentor. Rudy and I have lunch on, we had lunch on occasion and would talk everything from under the sun about business, politics, families, investments, and always Porsche. He told me the story of his life in great detail and what he had done and where he's been and how he got to the point in life that he was at. He often talked about how much he loved Paula, his wife, his daughters, his grandkids, his dad, his mom, siblings, and God. We eventually started traveling and attending Porsche events across the country. We attended Luft, uh, Ren Sport, uh, Redondo Classic, Austin Hill Rally. We had some incredible times in every event um, but our fo- most fun was at Ren Sport. I remember how much he loved listening to music in the car and all the genres. Rudy especially loved rap and old school Spanish music. I don't know why, but on this trip to Ren Sport, I recall listening to two particular songs on multiple occasions. One of the songs was No Limit by G Easy. <laughs> That's a funny video. Um, and the other song was Jose Alfredo Jimenez, uh, Cameo Day. I'm going to screw this up so don't butcher me on this guanasto uh but i think that's how you pronounce that i remember us driving up up and down the road both of us singing these songs all weekend not sure how appropriate the no limit song is but it will always remind me of the time in cali also at ren sport one night we decided to meet up for a few porsche guys for dinner at an upscale hotel we had a great time at the end of the dinner rudy offers to pick up the tab in typical Rudy fashion. Of course, we did not allow him to do that, but that was the kind of guy he was. After dinner, we decided to go to the hotel patio for a coffee and hang out. Uh, We ordered our coffee and we were hanging out, three young ladies uh, sitting near us taking selfies, not quite getting their pictures correct. Uh, I offered to take a picture of them and then they asked me if the people we were with, particularly Rudy, if he was Fat Joe. (laughs) Okay. And then... uh, Lewis says, why don't you go ask them if he's the rapper Fat Joe? Uh, so he walks over, and they, they patiently wait for Rudy to f- finish telling his story. And they ask him, hey, are you Fat Joe? And he goes, no, I'm Fat Rudy. <laughs> that was Rudy. Nice. Um, so, no, they, the girls insisted. They thought maybe Rudy was actually trying to be under, under the radar. But, no, he kept saying he was Fat Rudy. And um, I always remember that line because we laughed about it the rest of the weekend. And uh, I always say, no, I'm Fat Rudy. Um, for me, uh, Rudy was Porsche royalty. Um, and I think he was that to many others as well. 
I will miss him big time. I have many great memories, and I'm thankful he was in my life. These were just a few I wanted to share. Thank you so much for writing in, Lewis, yeah, because thanks, that Lewis. was really like heartfelt. And I wanted to write, uh, read that whole thing because he took the time to write that. Um, I remember the first time I talked to Rudy. I hadn't. I talked to him on the phone. What is it now? 2021, probably in 14, mm. um, 2014, and we were talking 964 stuff. Um, I didn't even know him. Like I just knew him from uh, Renlist. Mm. And then uh, he gave, he sent me his uh, number privately, and then we talked on the phone because I was actually asking him questions because I knew he had owned so many air cools, um, some some of the troubles points. I know that stuff's on Renless, but I kind of wanted to talk to a guy that had owned a lot, and I was mm-hmm. like, "Hey, where are the real signs of like wear and tear on these things? Where should I really be looking when I'm hunting?" And uh, he didn't know me from Adam. And he spent like 15, 20 minutes on the phone with me on like a Thursday night. I remember like, and I know he was crazy busy and I know he, but that's the kind of guy he was. And then finally, a couple years later, um, we met him at Luft mm-hmm. and hung out with him there. Like I had already known him, but I think maybe that was the first that's time first you, time I, you I had met actually him. met him in person. Right. And, um, even from that phone call in 2014, we've always kind of kept up with each other. We would like DM each other on Instagram but never really got to spend a lot of time in person. We'd see each other at events, even past that. But Luft was a real first time, like him and I got to spend a lot of time together. Um, and then, you know, it manifested, we messaged back and forth. Aaron and I collabed with him on a, another f- unfortunate family tragedy he had when he lost his grandson. Mm. Um, we worked with him and one of our artists to get him a special one-off poster that his grandson of a car that he liked and they both liked together and they shared a lot of memories in and we got that printed and sent it to him um, with that hashtag live like Raiden Um, and Aaron and I worked with him a lot on that and kind of surprised him in a way Um, he didn't really know that was coming and wow and then transforming all, all the other things that we know about Rudy and the time we spent and fast forward to just this past June when I went bought my GT3 um, he called me when I was in Austin, but unfortunately I had to come back. I wish I could have, but he invited me to come hang out with him for the, for the day in Houston uh, uh, while I was on my way back and spend some time and, you know, hang out at the warehouse and then like, you know, maybe hang out and have some dinner. But unfortunately I was on a time crunch and I really regret not doing that. Obviously you don't know what you don't, you don't know, know. Yeah, that's true. but you know, for me, I wish I would have seized that moment because that would have been a really special time I know like any time I could have spent with him would have been really nice and actually had planned on at some point actually going out there him and I actually planned on doing some type of like thing in Houston yeah. and putting an event together and having him on the podcast and I really am sad that we're going to miss that opportunity because I really wanted him to be on the show because he has so much portion knowledge Tom. to share and he's been through so many experiences with these air cools and then even water cools because he started buying mm. GT3s, uh, 996s and 997s. Um, some really nice stuff. What are some of the things that you remember about Rudy, Aaron? Um, some, well, something after we did the, the Raiden poster, uh, just how warm and receptive, how, how much it really meant to him. And, and you could see that when we saw, saw him in again in Chicago, mm-hmm. just like randomly. And that wasn't even... I don't think he would think he was even in the area of Chicago. Yeah, I think he I just, was actually at, he went to a Wisconsin, I think yeah, he was at a Packers game. Uh, Badger, I think it's Badgers, I think it's... Oh, yeah, the uh, college game, that's what it was. Game. He was at the, but he was still in Wisconsin, I think, yeah, I and think then I, they flew I in. I messaged him or something and said, hey, you're going to be here. He's like, yeah, I'll Yeah, be here. him and the family, like, flew in the next day yeah. or something, right, from Wisconsin. So, so and that was cool. I uh, didn't really see how much that that meant to him, and it was no no problem for us. One of the things that you reminded me of was saying the GT3, um, and there's a few videos out there, E-Garage and, and some others have um, interviewed him. Um, his take on the 997 GT3 and the 964, I don't know if you've ever heard that, but his no. take is the 997 GT3 is the more powerful 964. That's the way he looks at it. And and that went back to the story you were telling me when you got the mountains, you're like, well, I just drove it like my 964. So it made all that click for me. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Especially from a guy with that, Rudy, it has that kind of experience to be able to say, you know, he's in tune with it that much. Yeah, when you go buy a car in California, just so you can drive it all the way back yeah. to Texas. Yeah, and what Aaron's talking about, like, yeah, actually he bought that car, what was it, 
sh- had it shipped from Hawaii. Mm, yeah. Shipped from Hawaii to California, and him and his wife Paula did the whole like drive from California back to Houston because he had always wanted to drive that car. And um, that's a really cool story too. That I think is also documented on yeah. YouTube. He he talked about there. that. Um, Let's talk a little bit about Rootified, like what that really is. I know there's a lot of Ren Sporters that may be listening to us and they understand what that is, but I think there's a lot of other people around the world. They're not quite sure what that is. Why don't you go ahead and elaborate um, your take so on my, what, my you take understanding, on was, uh, what you're understanding, what Rootified is? My, my understanding was at first seeing, I was like, wow, well, I saw that, like saw the hashtags and stuff from back in the day. I've heard the, the term and, and mm-hmm. then I'm getting into it and looking more into it. I think it's even, it's a cooler take on things. So what he does is he like looks for hard back seats are one of his things. Mm-hmm. Seat belt color is one of the things. The matching emblem, and I didn't realize, I saw it on one of his cars, and I think it's a really, uh, was it turquoise blue? Yeah. Seeing that car and then realizing that he had done the seat belts in orange and mm-hmm. then the calipers in orange and yeah. the S was in orange, which yeah. I thought was red at first. I'm yeah. like, okay, well, that makes sense. And then, but he did the seat backs in blue turquoise yeah. to match. Yeah. And those little touches, that was something that, yeah, he's got style, and you it's can you, you could tell that from the all the the Nikes and stuff. That's when I was like, you know what? Maybe I should get a pair of Nikes. I yeah. keep seeing everything matching, but yeah, his with the Jordans style, and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, he was a big sneakerhead too. That was a big thing with him. He and loved sneakers. He had a lot of flights. Like mm-hmm. I forgot where the Rudified came from, but it was, somebody said it. And it well, I think they it. they named him that on uh, not really named it, but somebody said something yeah. reflecting to that on Ren Sport. So, or Renless, excuse yeah. me. Um, yeah, so that's what, basically what that is, and which is super cool because, you know, it's not like unheard of. No one, it's, like, it's not like he's the first person that ever did it. However, he was the first person to have the the size of collection, I would yeah. say, he had. He liked something, and then he repeated it over yeah, and over, over and over. On, yeah, mm-hmm. and it wasn't the exact same color, like Aaron was saying. Like, each car, he would work with what would pop on that car, and he added flavor to each of his cars. And again, that maybe isn't a thing for purists, but he wasn't a purist. He he liked what he liked and there's something to be said for that because that was his style those were his cars and actually over time he did so many of them it came he became known for that and because of that those cars became actually had a cachet that Mm. that was a rudy car and it actually added value to it as opposed to it maybe being bone stock um so I think that is actually pretty neat too that you can start to build your own legacy and flavor because you own enough of those cars and you do enough of those things to them and people understand how meticulous Rudy was every car Rudy ever got like got totally basically clean from like top mm. to bottom every every nook and cranny no matter how clean and great it was when it got there everything got paint corrected everything got handled right and everything was there was no knockoff stuff everything's OG stuff And the best way to describe it, we've used this term in the past, but we don't use it enough, OEM++. Mm. That's basically all of Rudy's stuff. That's definitely the style. And there was something to be said about that, too, because they're not not over the top, but they're also, like, way better than stock, man. Like, way, way better than stock. And um, I envied his collection. I still envy his collection. He he has an amazing flavor, an amazing taste towards those type of vehicles. Um, we won't talk about it a lot because this is a Porsche podcast, but he also did own a handful of BMWs as well. He got into Good that amount. phase. Of, he had, yeah. He had two warehouses. Yeah. He kept them separate. So no one really cares about those BMWs though. No, I'm just kidding. He did have some really badass BMWs. I, I, I just wanted to touch on that. I didn't want to kind of glaze over that, but back to the Porsche stuff he would do. Um, he just had some amazing, amazing cars. Well, it was to the point that if you see a crazy color, you're, you're asking yourself, you think we'd wrote that out? Yeah. And I'm going to tell one more story that he's a really good friend of ours, and he's also been on our podcast. If you haven't, it was one of our really earlier podcasts. Darren Fister, everybody knows him for Fister Motorsports stuff, where he makes these uh, exhausts a lot of uh, mm-hmm. for the air cooled cars, stage one, stage two, stage three. He's even doing them for the 996s. And, and Darren is really good friends with Rudy. They spent a lot of time together. I think almost every single exhaust system yeah, on Fister every, threes. yeah, had yeah. Fister threes on it. So, him and Darren were very, very close. I think he sent him probably like what sixty or seventy different sets I, because I he had. Uh, I mean, over time, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. That's how many cars they, he put them on. Um, but because of that relationship, and this is coming from Darren's mouth when we were back in Luft, way back, mm. um, early, early Luft, yeah. um, and we were at uh, in Newport Beach at yep, our buddy's at house at Kevin's house, and 
if you don't know, Darren owns a 964 and Amethyst. He got that car from Rudy. How he got that car from Rudy was he wanted one of Rudy's cars. So he asked him because of their business transactions. They were already friends at the time, but he was like, hey, I want to own one of your cars, much like Lewis. Car's not for sale. Well, he's like, well, my wife and I were having our a, a, a momentous anniversary. I want to say it was something like 25th or something mm. like that, or you know, 30th anniversary. And he wanted an anniversary present that he could present to her, but it was going to be both of theirs essentially. Um, and he wanted it to be very special. And I don't remember the other two cars that Rudy offered uh, Darren for sale, but he mm. offered him three. Uh, once he heard that story, Rudy, if you don't know this, has a big heart. He's into that kind of stuff, family stuff and all that kind of stuff. Mm. And, um, well, one of the three was this amethyst one. Um, and Darren was telling me his story. He's like, okay, I, I pick that one. And Rudy <laughs> said, he's like, of all the three, I, when I offered you that one, that is the one I didn't really want to offer because I options. didn't want to sell yeah. it. But he, he they kind of went back and forth a little bit. It was like uh, Darren was being pretty transparent about it. He's like, he really didn't want to sell me the car, but it pretty much like put him to the screws. And I was like begging him essentially. He was like, come on, man, this is like super special and this is going to be so good and da 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 da. And so, long story short, he sold him the car beautiful car we've seen in yeah, person that's, that's an immaculate car too i mean honestly it's probably up there outside of like the rs colors with like maritime and mint and just one of the standard c2 mm. colors that car is so fire the way it's set up it's it's so good it's got the gold e88s on it the stance is perfect on it the way that purple is on it it's it's unreal like that car is just gorgeous and he owns that car um this was probably like five six five years ago now maybe four years ago who knows and i know darren's going to cherish their relationship but that car probably means even more to him now with the unfortunate passing of rudy because that's a part of his friendship too because he's going to share that special story of man i i have this car and i know darren's like us he's a he's a legacy guy Mm. he he that car story will always be that special because of that I mean, if any, you know that anything in his life happens, that car is not going anywhere. Basically, is what I'm saying. And yeah. even before Rudy's passing, I know it was that special to him anyhow because of the the purpose of the car and who it came from to begin with. Um, but that car is very special, and I don't know if many people know that story about that car. But Rudy did stuff like that too. So that's two stories we've shared that Rudy sold a car to somebody that he's close with that he doesn't sell cars. So he does have a heart, and he was even though he loves them all. But man, when you hit him with something, he's just like, man, I got to sell you this car, you know. Um, and I just wanted to share those things. We're gonna be, we're gonna really miss Rudy. Um, I know his family misses him already. Um, I miss him, and everybody around the world misses him because he left such an impact, and he was such a nice person. And there's definitely a big hole left in the community because he's mm-hmm. gone now. And um, I think Aaron and I, we talked a little offline. I don't want to share too much. And I talked to a couple other people. Like, I think we're going to try to do a little something special, like a decal or something like that, mm. and pretty much just donate all the proceeds to like maybe like a like a hashtag rootified fund or something like that mm. that's out there that can help a charity. Um, and I think it'd be kind of cool to put like, you know, almost like a quarter window decal or something like that, you know, hashtag Mr. Or, or just it says Mr. You know, nine, nine, three or something like that, you know, and like cool eighties colors or something like something poppy that Rudy would, would like, yeah. um, it's in the works in my head. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Right. Like yeah. block letters, like, I was font, about something like as, maybe yeah, even like talking. all like different colors, like letters, right? Like with mint green and whatever. And each, each letter, mm-hmm. um, turning a different color, but we'll get the works out and we'll let you guys know. And then we'll work with, you know, the people that are close to Rudy to see if we can set up some fun that way. All the money goes to that way. Um, yeah, go to all of those things that we were telling you to check out. If you didn't know who Rudy was, um, there's a pretty good couple. Um, I don't want to call them like documentaries, but they're more short films on Rudy yeah. on uh, YouTube that were produced long ago to kind of let you know who he was and what kind of a person he was. But uh, we'll miss you, bud. Let's take a quick break and then we'll come back with the rest of our show. Right. All right. We're back from break. We are. So we're going to do our little thank you since, you know, we kind of wanted to dedicate that first hour to, I mean, excuse me, first 30 minutes to Rudy. And so we'll get started with the second half of the show. So who are we thanking? Okay. We're going to do our Patreon thank yous, as always. Start off with our producers and then go to our Sriracha Boys. So our producers, we got Brandon J. We got Eric A. 
Robert G. And that is the producer list. The rest of them is all Sriracha Boys. Hot Boys right here. Hot so, Boys coming in. Got hot Boys. Hot Scott boys, hot H. Boys. Brian R. Matthew G. Matthew M. Sean H. Nikki F. And Todd M. And Aaron L. Aaron L. And then the cool thing is a lot of those Sriracha Boys are double dipping. So a lot of them are members. P Car Cub club members and sriracha boys RS members so thank you so much for the team that supports us all of those shout outs to also want to say thank you to all the members uh you are not forgotten just because we're shouting them out um but we also want to you know obviously give those a special shout out if you are interested in being that on that list and the shout out list we are going to always shout those people out and yep. we appreciate the people that are double dipping so so much and we appreciate the people that aren't even double dipping that are just contributing because it really, really does make a huge impact um, into the show because you guys are the backbone. There is a lot of expense that goes into this. We occasionally get a sponsor um, here or there. We do not currently have one. You guys are the sponsor. The membership is the sponsor. So you are the, literally the lifeline that makes things happen. And Aaron and I are so, so thankful that you guys are stepping up and doing that kind of stuff. And again, you guys are going to get things to becoming a sriracha boy right like there's stuff coming with that yep. so it's not just us taking money like we give back still on that end of it yeah we're gonna charge for that stuff for sure so i just saw it happen um <laughs> so the people that, that signed up at the beginning they should be getting their decal should be on the way from what i've seen yeah because you got a, a notification yep. that some stuff got sent out to mm-hmm. those people that first became sriracha yep. boys so check your mailboxes because that should be on the way right and then let it like us let me know if it's not yeah definitely let, let aaron know um if you were first that first wave um what is it the first three or four months they should be getting a decal it's the first right? three months okay. it's every three months you get something okay. so if you've been there for three months then you should be seeing something and if you haven't let me know and i'll very very cool figure it out all right so gt3 update on my car finally this stuff has come in from soul performance it was on a wait uh so what's coming in if you don't remember as a refresher um the primary deletes uh, are coming in the car already has a secondary delete uh bypass and we're going to put race headers on it and i already have a tune that's going to go on with this as well that's all happening mm-hmm. this weekend so the secondary deletes the centers right mm-hmm. and then so your primary deletes are your actual the, the, yeah, the, the valve the, well, yeah the, they're the valve yeah. it's two it's two things right so mm-hmm. the valves on the on the there's a primary muffler that's valved mm-hmm. taking that off and then race headers with no cats are going on. Oh, okay. So. You don't want your valves to fail. You just want them to stay. I wanted. I, so if you don't remember, I tried to get the race headers to work with the muffled valve oh, thing. But they the do issue. not work okay. because those that valve system is so heavy, it has a bracket that has to hold it. Mm. This unvalve system that Soul Performance made for us. Ha- hashtag Soul Performance. Thank you. Hashtag Mike. Um, it doesn't have to have a bracket because it's so lightweight. So then that can attach the race header. Uh, so that's what, the that was, the was what the problem was, is the race header couldn't clear that bracket because mm. there's the bracket hanging down, holding this thing. Now we can eliminate the bracket mm. because we don't have to have those heavy ass factory valved muffler system in there. That's going to be gone. Wait. Yeah. Well, I'm a little nervous here, here too, because although the, the 964 sounds like the world is ending, which I'm got used to over time. That's a different world ending sound. Yeah. This thing is really going to, there's nothing. It's 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 essentially straight piped, yeah. so it's going to sound like a cup car all the time, which makes me a little nervous. I don't but I guess I'll get used bad, to though, it. Man. Yeah, but I, I think it's going to be bad. I think. I, think I mean, it's going to be bad in a good way, but it's yeah. going to be loud. I mean, I, come on, we go to HSR races and we're seeing the 997s just sitting there at idle, and they're like, Arr. I think I think it's going to be yeah, I think it's going to be all the R's, um, but I don't. I don't think it's going to be, ter- well, I don't know. I, it probably will be terrible. Let's okay. get a drone. It's going to yeah. be bad. I'm bringing your mouse just in case, like on the way up for yeah. our drive, but we'll see. So that's the update that's coming. I'm super excited about that because I knew it was going to happen. Just didn't know when it was going to happen. So that's going to happen this Saturday. You'll get it on the next show. I'll tell you how it sounds. If I'm like, oh, my God, it was ridiculous. There will probably be some soundbite clips, I'm, I'm sure, coming. Um, and then the goal is to do a review with that car after the, maybe this September time frame because Aaron and I are super busy. You know, obviously we're going on the road for like eight eight days for this loof thing. Um, oh, yeah, that's happening. But, uh, you know, update, full update to follow. You might not even be able to hear us kind of like the same thing in the 964 video. You can't really hear us unless we're like 2,000 RPM. So it might be 
putting around in six gre- gear just so he can speak. Aaron's back. Um, anyways, so Porsche teams are getting ready for Le Mans. Yeah, That's this are. weekend. Um, locking down great pole positions right on all the cars. However, thanks to Mac Bamthor. Yeah, I seen that. Yeah, the shirt, the hashtag yeah. Mac Bamthor. Um, but the problem with the car, same thing with this RSR the last time. When the RSR debut, debuted, they're having a top speed problem. Mm. Their top speed right now is only 183.7. That is a problem when you're going down the Malsan straight. Yeah, it's um, about, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, from, yeah it's about, about, the, about par, I guess. So that's the big thing right now. They're, they're looking for mile per hour. Um, as you know, they don't have a good mile per hour because this car has so much more aero, so it's pushing the car down. There's a lot of resistance on this car. Duck tail. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but what are you going to do when you need it planted, right? Exactly. It's going to slide all over the place. Um, so they're going to change the angle of the plane. I don't know how much more mile per hour they can really get out of this. Maybe a couple. They're not going to eke a lot out of this car. We don't know what anybody else is doing. Um, I didn't do rather. the numbers on it, but I'm just basing this off of, remember when we watched this car debut? Mm. And remember that first time they hit the the, the Mulsanne straight when I think we were both watching it at mm. separately at your house and I was watching it, but we were texting and, oh, yeah, the and, and literally like, like everybody's just walking right by the car yeah. down the straight because we were just maxed out. We were pinned and you know, they're carrying 199, 200. You know, I mean, at that level, that's pretty much what you, you get to though on that when you're six. You yeah. But what I'm saying when you're 16 miles per hour faster, that's significant. That's right. That's significant. Well, in a 24-hour race, that's yeah. significant. Even if it's a couple miles an hour, it still makes yeah, a difference. Yeah, that's significant. Yeah. So they're going to look for it. Will they find it? Who the hell knows because it's going to be debatable. But I'm excited that race is happening this weekend. But are you nervous with that? Because are we, is this going to be the same thing again that maybe. we watched last I, time? Because this is essentially the same car just because it's wearing different well, skin. That, well, getting BOP didn't help. And I hope that's – I know we're setting good lap times, but we don't need we don't need any help slowing yeah. down. Exactly. Um, and, I, again, we get, like you said, we did get BOP'd. However, we're having a slipstream problem because that big old wing is a ton of downforce. And just this is it. not really – the race for that kind of arrow mm. you know ideally it would be you would run a, you would want to run a lower arrow almost kind of a gt3 rs wing and not that monster swan neck they're but running then you want to also carry speed through uh the back half too yeah but and the thing is, is it does it ba- fifth gear yeah it does it balance out though i yeah. mean it didn't seem like it because they lost a no. lot of position um, that up front too i don't even think it was i don't think they were in the mall side i think they were just starting the that's race what i'm saying is like yeah. They just can't carry enough speed, it seems like. Mm. It was like they were carrying an anchor. But, again, the car was BOP pretty heavily. However, they did mention this, though. They said, hey, the car is having a problem with top speed. Um, we'll see, I guess, right? Yep. To be determined. Yeah, that's this Saturday. Is that correct? Yeah. It starts for us this Saturday mm-hmm. and ends on Sunday. Mm-hmm. I can't remember the times. Just look it up on the uh, old inter- afternoon, interwebs. Afternoon. Yeah, like I think Normally. for us, I want to say it's probably 3, 4 p.m. ish. Mm. Well, no. It's earlier. I think it's, it's earlier 10. than that, right? Like 10 a.m., right? Mm. Because the, the race usually starts 3, 4 p.m. Yep. there, right? Mm. So, yeah, probably 10 a.m. Yeah, probably 10 a.m. for us mm. ish. ish. Um, and you can watch that on all the uh, stuff. You can figure that out. EMSA Pass or, you know, NBC Sports Gold or whatever. Yep. Um, I'm sleeping back over. Yeah. Keeping out. 24 hours oh yeah you want you want to come watch it over yeah, here I'm watching my house good i don't want you over here anyways <laughs> over here snoring or whatever you end up doing that's true i think it's snoring less lately but yeah whatever porsche's teasing the ev concept we knew this was coming already we've talked about it on the show we didn't know the concept was coming but we were wondering mm-hmm. we've debated this you're like hey when is this going to come out because they've they already had a release date that they already say that this thing is going to be sold Yep. So EV Boxster, they didn't show a lot of it. They showed like a headlight, basically. <laughs> but everybody's like saying, "Hey, that's going to be the EV Boxster." <laughs> that's, that's the only thing they have done yet. And they're like, "Hey, so we're we got something." Yeah, headlight guy's done. Yeah, so I. Fa- these things are actually being pushed up faster and faster. The EV stuff, um, as we kind of discussed well, prior, I mean, with that lawsuit looming over them, the mm-hmm. faster they can be like, "Oh, we're good now." Yeah. Yeah, we don't sell any. Uh, any combustion cars anymore we're good they're done do you think so let's go let's yep. talk a little bit about this because let's be real there isn't a lot of two-door 
EVs that are sexy out there. Yep, except for um, the one that the other Tesla's promised for a million years that ago. That's still never going to probably show up, right? Yeah. Just taking a million deposits on them and just well, you know. stacking money and putting it in Doge and doing whatever he wants with it. In space. Then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's just reinvesting the money you guys are giving him, guys. Come on, he's not an idiot. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be, <laughs> I, I don't think. Well, is there a two door out there? There's not a two door out there. No, no. So, man, this might sell, mm-hmm. just like the Taycan, pretty much. Well, I think the opportunity. Whole, to, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Is I know they're not going to price it super high because it's just not in that price point. Turbo S version? No. I don't even know if that's. I don't even know if that's necessary. But I'm saying I'm not. I don't think they're going to be dirt cheap. But I think this is going to really change the market because. I think it'll be 50, 60s. I, I think it'll be... I think it'll be more than that. I'm thinking 85 probably for this car. The only reason I say those numbers is because if they're able to do a two-wheel drive um, Taycan for uh, 80, yeah, I think they might be able to get it down. A top down, goes down, price goes up. So I think 85, I think, is probably going to be in the wheelhouse just to get uh, you in. You know, you're, you're probably right on that just because of the GTSs and... However, the, I think this like, car... If it comes out when it's supposed to come out, I think in 2023, um, they're going to sell a lot of these, especially uh, think um, about California, think so. oh, yeah. all of those places. You get a two-door convertible EV. I mean, the last time we saw something like that was what? The Tesla, um, not Tesla, was it? Uh, yeah, it was Tesla, right? They came out with one a long, long time ago, that little two-door thing. But oh, that was yeah. kind of like that, when they first started, that yeah. weirdo-like mm-hmm. thing that they did, and they only made so many of them, whatever. But this is going to be mass-produced. I think this is going to be the first mass-produced two-door car sports car now there's other ones i think honda has like a e but it's an economy car it's yeah. not a it's a two-door yes but it's it's not made for sports it's not car stuff for performance things. exactly mm. um no projections yet on levels of batteries with this thing as far as range um the fact of it i again going back to a full-on release for everybody to see i still think we're going to see something at the end of the year where they do one of those digital youtube releases and yeah. this thing shows up and it comes out and it's going to be like oh it's this it's that it's that and i think it's going it to start also, at this and i think it also shows us the power of their partnerships because it's been recently where they partnered with a few different battery technologies and all and i feel like maybe that was what was holding them back or them projecting out long was like we'd like to do this but we don't think we're quite there yet yeah i think you're right yeah i think that's possible Okay, so Porsche Monterey Car Week just finished out uh, this past weekend. Um, from the Porsche standpoint, we'll go ahead and run through that gamut because there's a lot to cover there. Mm-hmm. So if you haven't seen it on Instagram, this is pretty funny. Um, thankfully, it's funny because it didn't turn into a disaster, oh, yeah. but it definitely could have been a disaster. So if you guys seen this 917, there's a gentleman down there laying on the ground firing it up um, for whatever reason. He may, I guess, have forgot the car was in gear. Um, So he fired the car up, and it starts to scurry down the the lawn. Yeah, a little bit. And then, you know, they cut the car off, and, you know, thank God it didn't run anybody over or significantly hurt the car or himself because he's half in the car, like, laying in the car. I don't know if it's a judge or a journalist. I thought he looked like a... The judge probably wouldn't be the one starting the car. It probably was somebody in the ownership caretaker. Maybe not the flat-out owner, but you know how they... If you guys don't know this, there's a when you're that wealthy and you have a car, you have liaisons who babysit your car for you and kind of take care of the car and present the car and are knowledgeable about the car and all that kind of stuff. I think that's who this person was, um, who was kind of laying on the ground. Um, I think he had grass stains on his knees well, and, sure. and uh, code brown stains on the back, probably, <laughs> yeah. because he was watching about $16 million run down the hill that he was responsible for. And he was probably going to be executed in the worst kind of way if that's something bad happened there. Um, however, if you haven't seen that video, the point I bring that up is it's all over Instagram. It's went viral. Take a look at it. It's a pretty scary moment, but it turns out to be okay. So I'm not. Do you put your 917 in gear whenever you park it or no? Probably. I mean, it was on the hill. I mean, I don't think that car has an e-brake. That's true. I think it was just a bonehead mistake of him not he just realizing. Just fired up, yeah. It, and and a lot of people made a good point. I think either when you post it or even on Verone's thing, everybody who drives a manual, it's kind of a rookie move, right? Like you, any car you ever get into, you always check the manual shift Man. knob to see if it's there's play so it's not in gear when you start it. And if you don't do that and you have a manual and you haven't been burned yet, start doing that because that is a good practice to get in to make sure that the car's in neutral before you fire it up so this boneheaded shit doesn't happen to you. 
um, like that kind of happened to this guy. Um, crisis averted, but uh, definitely a scary, what, probably five seconds I of I watching scared. it. I didn't know what was happening. I thought it was well, when I saw it yeah. and I saw that thing like take off, I was like, holy shit. And then it, thankfully, everybody was quick enough to like, it was standing in front of it, jumped out of the way mm. and didn't get, you know, basically pancaked because that thing is an ankle cutter. Yeah. It's like on the ground. Yes. So anyways, so that's the beginning of our Monterey Car Week uh, synopsis here. So thoughts on this. Uh, that 917, I don't know if that was the particular one because there was a couple for sale, mm -hmm. but there was a 917 for sale. It was a hero car in the movie Le Mans. Yep, um, which we knew was going. It got bid up to $15 million, but didn't make reserve. Estimated sale on that car was 16 to $18.5 million. Um, now, that exact car sold in 17 for $14 million. So it hit its target again. Exactly. Do you think that the pricing for not taking the 16 to 18 million or whatever, was that a little ambitious on this car? I think it might have been. I think we're kind of seeing that in the entire market besides the point. Um, yeah, it may have been. I think 14, 14 seems reasonable if we went for 14 last time. They admit, yeah, and they got the 15, you would have made a million. Who knows, after caretaking and all that stuff, it might have been a wash. Maybe that's yeah. why you wanted a little bit more. I, he probably was sitting, I bet you they were sitting at the 18, hoping for the best. Yeah, probably. But at the end of the day, I think... I mean, if you own a car, it's that valuable and that low numbers. I think... And everybody wants it to do well because if you've got one that's stable, yeah. then now you so I, the bar. So I think it. I think it's kind of a... I was going to ask you, do you think it was a dumb move for not for him not letting it go at 15? But I think it's actually kind of a smart move because mm -hmm. he owns a commodity that doesn't really exist. Um, Try I again. think eventually it's somebody's going to pay what he wants for it. Um, at maybe, least got pressed, though. That's another thing, too. Yeah. Like, even though it might not have, they may, he may get more press for it not selling. And every, well, obviously, we're talking about it. Yeah. Other people will be doing as well. And then, okay, who's got this card? And maybe it sells privately now. Yeah. It's strong money, 15 million strong money for that car. But I mean, to put it in perspective, I don't know. I, I, I would have paid more for this if I had the money, I guess to make the sale because they are so rare and it was it's in the classic the golf history. livery yeah. and it was in the movie it's documented it's not some bullshit so um there's only so many of them um so next one uh there was a 997.1 gt3 rs that sold for two hundred and seventeen thousand yeah, dollars in all black so yes an all black one's kind of a rare car but at the same time dude that is crazy strong money 217 on a 997.1 rs yeah that's Whew. Yeah, all, all RSs are definitely rising right yeah. now. Well, I think all manual RSs. Yeah. I mean, the manual is the key term there. Mm. Um, so that was, I wouldn't say surprising, but maybe a little surprising. I mean, so, so yeah, maybe what markets, if there's a such thing as a market down on a 917, but it's up on an RS. So I, I, yeah, all, the point of this story is I've got some really mind-blowing stuff that I'm going to tell you here in a little bit. Um, the point is, is Porsche's up still like if people are worried and oh, they're yeah. like oh well eventually the bubble is going to pop I don't know, there man. is no such thing as a bubble no. because there's other people other than us that i would say that are way more qualified that have been in the market mm. for a very very long time that have no skin in the game because they're not selling cars they're giving just personal opinion and professional opinion on the cars um they're saying if anything it's just going to level off yeah. like it won't go down wherever the prices are they're going to stay maybe they won't continue to accrue as quickly as they are but uh, where the prices are right now is the prices where they're at. So everybody who's sitting on this thing that's thinking these things are going to, like, the bottom's going to fall out of this, you're, you know, shitting in one hand and wishing in the other because that's not going to happen. Um, anyways. Well, even with this RS at 2, what did you say, 215? 217, two, yeah. 217. I mean, it's still a big gap between that and a 4 liter, so. Oh, yeah. But I'm just still saying, like, all of these things, like, benchmarks are being set here, right? So... Yes, these are a lot of uh, a rare cars to begin with, and like that to put the, to tell you guys a little bit of preview. That two seventeen is the lowest car that I'm going to talk about right now. Uh, so, but before we move to that, Gunther Works uh, released their Speedster at Monterey Car Week. There's pictures all over it. Obviously, we didn't go to Car Week; we didn't see it, but we have eyes and we can see the internet. What do you think about this? Mm, that's my thoughts. I yeah. don't know. I don't. I don't. I'll I'm have not. to give it some more looking, I guess, to appreciate it. Uh, but seeing it. The initial look, I'm kind of like, mm. yeah. I mean, I like what they were doing. I like what they've done in iteration wise, not in their speed style. I have their other stuff, mm -hmm. but I think this may have been 
It's just a little different for me. Yeah. They're making a really low number of them, too. I think they're only doing 25 of them. And, okay. of course, they're, like, crazy expensive. But anyways, I kind of feel the same way. I think it looks a little strange for me. I, I don't think it's enough. I think there's too many angles. I think it looks almost like a too much of a concept car, right? Mm. As, as odd as that sounds, because yeah. usually car people like concept cars. And they're like, oh, why don't you build it like that? But I just feel like... It doesn't even look like an air-cooled no, car the anymore. Problem is, the problem is that Porsche is still making speedsters and spiders and everything else. And that design looks good. Mm-hmm. Those, those proportions look well. The roundness makes sense. Mm-hmm. That's a lineage with that. When you start tinkering with that and saying, well, this looks better. Mm, yeah. You got a lot of... Where you got a wide, you, real yeah, big wide body exactly. on it or something. You've got a, you got a lot of um, pushback from you know something that already exists. Yeah, I didn't even think about it That's from a, a desi- design element from a where your eyes are trying to maybe relearn mm. what that's supposed to look like. It's a great looking car. I I'm just not in love with it. Who am I to be a critic on this thing? I think it was just something for us you know, to bring out because they wanted to talk about it. Like I don't, and a half, or you know I don't even know. It's it's up there. It's a lot. And I think it's one of the I think it's one of those things where you had to be invited to buy it too. Huh. Um kinda like D- D L S type stuff. Yeah. I got two two voicemails. Guys are guys are just got that GT three, you know, to get that money. Yeah. Oh, they're killing it, right? Like Sriracha. Oh, they must be. They're loaded, man. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Anyways, I thought it was it. It's an interesting. I love. Here's what I like more. I like the idea of it more than mm-hmm. I actually like it. Does that make sense? Like, I like the concept of it, like design element. I like the exercise of it. I don't think it really matters because the twenty five people that are going to buy this thing or whatever, they're going to see it at parked at monterey or you're going to see it part like you're not going to see them just chilling hanging out doing their thing i mean i have the only time i've ever seen like gone their works in general has been when peter's near it and they're releasing a car it's not not been with anybody else driving or the, the when the journalist was testing it but no that's not true because at um they sent their their rep to um to miami at um that's right. Uh, oh, yeah, I, mean, I mean, that's that's when we see them, but I haven't seen like anybody like that. Oh, you mean you're just like hang up, his, hang out, and yeah. something? Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's what I'm saying. Well, yeah, they're I mean, we're seeing that. Yeah, that's super expensive, and actually, to in fair trade because not really fair to compare these two, but they're the the similar ones at least in the U.S. that we're every everyone is familiar with is Singer. We do see Singers that way. We've gone to Amelia Island, and they're not being displayed, and they're in the parking garage. People are driven their own Singer there. We've oh, no, been to we DRT, Monterey, where people thing. have driven their own Singer there. Um, you're right. I have yet to see a Gunther Works personally owned car just driven to an event to hang out, even if they're going to display it, but being a customer car. I haven't seen that yet. I mean, we saw, yeah, like I was saying, we, it reminded me of Monterey. We saw the, I don't know if it was Arena Red or similar color. Because they had parked on one of the corners in Carmel by the sea. Because mm-hmm. Vinny was driving the um, Hennessy yeah, truck. Yeah. yeah. Six and parked behind it. Yeah, exactly. So a couple more cars. So this is a world record, but I, and there was another world record at, at past this. This is a 914 world record. 914.6 M471 code. Only ever built 23 of these. Essentially, it's the wide body. Mm-hmm. Um, that code exists within Porsche's. Like element for other uh, PC. Yeah. Mm. Um, car at 5,200 miles. Hammered down was 626, $626,000 on a 914. Good for them. 914 is doing damage out there, brother. Um, granted, there's only 23 of these. So you're, what, what really translates out. here, right? Low number car, high dollar price. Yeah. This this exercise, this, yeah, this exercise is always the same thing. Um, would you pay six hundred twenty-six thousand dollars for a uh, for a nine fourteen? If I had other cars, in, uh, <laughs> if I had other cars, I'm in my collection. Paint you in a corner right now. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Next car. Uh, this is a nine eleven. Uh, Nineteen sixty-eight nine eleven R. Sold for three point three million. Now, to give you a little background on this stuff, because. It's not like a lot of this stuff is discussed. There was only four prototypes uh, 911Rs made, and then they made 20 actual serial number cars. Um, So there's 24 of these in total kind of floating around. Um, So super low number again. Um, A little background on the car. It only weighs 1,800 pounds, 210 horsepower. That's a pretty fast little car, man. Yeah. That thing can get down. Yeah, that thing can get down. 3.3 million, though, that's pretty strong money, right? 
It is, but I mean, it's now older, and you're definitely not seeing any of those. No, of course not. We've never even seen one in person. I have. No, you haven't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what at the museum? No. Why? I saw it in in Monterey. This guy. Prototype car, actually. Taut tails. No. Anyways, let's go in the let's go in the auction. I don't know if it auctioned or what it auctioned for, but I did. So this is another world record. This is a G body, standard three two. Nothing crazy about this car. However, before I say nothing crazy about the car, it was Special Wishes paint and Special Wishes interior. So this basically had teal all the way interior. If you can go to RM and see this car as black with like a faded teal stripes on, on the roof of this car. Uh, came from that way from the factory. Um, that's the only thing. It's not a souped up motor, nothing crazy okay. like that. Um, the car had, I want to say it had like 40,000 kilometers on it. So it was driven. It was owned by a Porsche executive, so what it has a little bit cash, a little bit, yeah. But I don't know if that's strong enough cachet to hammer down at three hundred and sixty-two thousand dollars. So that's a world record G body right there. Yeah, that is three hundred and sixty-two thousand. And some would say, well, okay, well, there's G bodies that, yeah, you can get into the net and gritty because there's like a club sport that they made like thirteen mm-hmm. of them. I, I'm talking about for standard G body. Yeah, that's great. This is a standard three two that pretty much everybody and their mother has hot rotted and has out there right now. You can see probably 30 of them at Target if you go there. Um, you can see 100 of them on the West Coast if you just go to an event. That's this car, just special wishes paint, special wishes interior. Again, does paint interior make this go out that much? Well, in this case, apparently uh, so. Absolutely. Um, I mean, it is pretty rad looking, but I man, mean, that is crazy strong I, money for interior and paint. I would explain all the G bodies for like sixty grand right now. Yeah, well, those were already there prior to this. Um, so, my final one, 914 GT, only made sixteen of these ever. Another rare car, very special car, six hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars. Nope. <laughs> nope. You wouldn't. You're telling me you wouldn't pay that for for a nine fourteen, bro? They I'd, only made sixteen of them. I'd save my. I'd save a few thousand, a few hundred thousand, and buy the uh, the nine fourteen six, but the wide body. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Which one? The, the, the first one. Yeah, for six. Yeah, you'd well, save I mean, all of forty thousand dollars. Forty thousand bucks. Same you're gonna money. save forty thousand dollars and buy that one. I got I got things to do. Well, you could buy the uh, the other nine fourteen six. That's not an M four seventy one code, and those. Go for rock around a hundred fifty probably right now. I like the uh, body. They only made of those actual nine fourteen sixes like that the wide body one. Um, I think they made like thirty two something you know and some change. That's how many they made of those total from like mm. sixty eight to like seventy two something like that range. Um, but another world record on a nine fourteen on the way up. So apparently. We used to need to buy stock of 914, right? Well, I, th- I mean, it's just different, too. I mean, uh, these things haven't been sitting in collections. and Yeah. And not- well, on the flip side of that, too, right? It It's Porsche. It's low numbers. It doesn't matter what it is, really. It, if it's low numbers, and a lot of these, like the GTs, were, they were kind of like race cars, you know? And so there's so many. The point that I bring all this stuff up is... And why I showed the 914s. Yes, they sold, so that's just accuracy. I can't mm. even, like, make that stuff up. It's just that's what's happened. Um, I find it still interesting. I don't know if the, I don't know if those cars would have sold that much even five years ago. I mean, we don't even have to go back ten years. Yeah, we don't. I, I don't think the 600 is really strong. Fuck, yeah, that's strong, strong money, man. Really strong money, dude. Um, but, again, I guess you could. it's all relative, right, too, because that's crazy strong money for a 3-2. I mean, yeah. That 3.2 standard Carrera, $362,000 because of interior and paint. Bro. So everybody that has a special wishes car right now is probably listening and like, fucking putting it up for sale. (laughs) Even if I get a third of that, I'm in. Yeah. Um, Probably not going to make it happen because this thing was like cherry. And it Um, probably had, like you said, even though it was 40,000 kilometers, it had the the cachet of being a Porsche executive special wishes car. I don't think so. But this last go on to Porsche. RM site and look at that stuff. Um, all of these cars are on there that I pulled directly from their site. Um, not, you know, big shout out to them. There was more I wanted to pull, but, you know, when they have special cars, it's you have to contact them on pricing because they don't want it to be public knowledge. There was a 962C that was on there for sale. It was contact them on pricing. I was just like, fuck this. Like, I just wanted to gather some data and bring it to bring it to light. But to that 914, I sold it. 
no way, dude. That probably that thing's a three and a half million dollar car all day, if not more. Um, but that's all I have. Do you have anything else? I don't. It sounds like everybody's rounding out their collections with nine fourteens. Yeah, nine fourteens are hot. Get them while they're hot, right? Anyways, thank you guys so much for listening. We will talk to you guys on the next one. Yep. See you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Pcar Talk. Connect with us on Instagram at Pcar Talk or online at pcartalk.com.